subscribe welcome back to my channel so it's still morning where i'm at maybe that's why my eyes are not completely open but i'm finally back with your questions guys i know it's been a while since i posted on my community section ask me anything but i was researching doing some other stuff and here i am so i've asked you guys to ask me anything about spirituality or anything that you would like to know interestingly enough the comments that got the most likes were the ones that are connected to my own personal journey i know this can be helpful for some other people you know when they hear how other people dealt with certain situations so let's dive into your questions i have a couple of questions opened in front of me so let's start with the most liked comment which is by lilith jesus you said your personal experience, how you learn to hone your gifts, shaman, sickness, mentor, on your own, etc. Now, when it comes to my path, I've, um, I've done a lot of things on my own. And uh, until now, I don't have any uh, so-called mentor. But how I liked to approach my path, first of all, I got to know myself and my intuition really well see because when you into your intuition is quite high and when you have this connection to your higher self it's pretty easy then to know where to go what to do where you're being drawn to what life path you you're supposed to be on right and what kind of people um are there for you you know those uh those meaningful passengers as i like to call them so i started my journey I don't even know when I started it because it was with me all the time. As many of you guys know, I did start seeing spirits very early on, I think as, as young as I could walk. And um, it was always with me. And I think it was due to my um, near-death experience as well when I was around two years old. So the spiritual aspects um, was always with me but what I took some more time to do was to understand myself and to understand the sensations that I'm getting and to see how that pans out to be you know I would question myself and I'd say hey how do I feel about the situation what's gonna be what's gonna turn out how do I feel about this person how do I feel about this job you know so it's it was all about coming from here how do I feel uh, rather than you know how do I think about it and uh, I didn't have any uh, any teachers so-called and I'm really glad that I didn't for a, for a long time because I found myself first and I found out what I like to do and what kind of work I want to do and how I want to approach certain craft um, and further on I'm gonna be taking courses so that's why I'm lagging a little bit but yeah if any of you guys are doing this already I'm gonna be doing the um, healing quantum sorry quantum healing hypnosis course uh, which i'm really pumped about all right so yeah kind of um, i kind of questioned myself you said how how did you learn to hone your your abilities I, like, I don't like to call it gifts because we all have it and you guys probably heard that um heard me saying that pretty uh, often but again it's for me it's all about practice it's all about practice and kind of tracking yourself and seeing the progress you know at first maybe you're not going to be as in tune but the more you do it it's like a spiritual gym you know the more you go to the gym the stronger your muscles so the same the more you practice the stronger the intuitive muscle right the heart space can feel anything so that's pretty much it now blue soul had a lot of questions too <laughs> well that's interesting by the way when it comes to spiritual mentors and teachers there's so much information online right now at this day and age if you question something if you're not not sure about something there is always information available so many times people don't even go for a full course you know or for full-blown mentorship they find themselves gathering information from different sources for example Gaia we have Gaia now there are a lot of spiritual people talking about very different subjects and super interesting that digs so deep into the cosmic energy I like to call it and the subconscious that you can learn a lot there too okay 
Blue Soul. There must be a huge transformation and leap of faith to reach where you are now. Can you share your experience on how do you walk your path from your previous career to tarot reader? And can you explain your experience in transitioning to a different path? Mm. Guys, I talked about this quite a lot on my previous video. It's called Coming Back Home. I'm going to link it down below. I went as deep as into numerology connected to my life events when I was in the midst of transitioning from architectural path to spiritual path. So if you're interested, I'm going to drop the link down below. I describe my whole journey and how I found my way back to my life path. Because as many of you know, guys, I keep telling you, if you want to find what kind of connection you have with life path, look back to your childhood. And some people forget, you know, what they used to like, what um, they used to do. For example, me, when I came back home. So why I'm saying I came back home because I've lived in London for 10 years and then in 2020, I moved back home. And uh, what I found digging in drawers <laughs> back home is that I was practicing tarot and I was doing tarot work in a way when I was a kid, but just forgotten about it, see? And there was a reason for me to forget about it because I had to go to different avenues and learn certain things and see how I like those certain things or how I don't like certain things in order to understand what, what I'm here for. I grew up having, you know, spiritual books around and, uh, you know, my mom would never call me crazy if I told her that I saw a spirit. She was quite spiritual herself. She is still very much so. And um, my family has ability to heal. You know, my dad can heal with hands, but he doesn't, um, <laughs> he doesn't really accept it because he's such a logical type of guy. You know, he's, he's like, no, this is woo-woo shit. Like, I don't like this. <laughs> but yeah, he, could, he can heal with his hands um, and take away the pain. Same for my mom, same for me. So the environment that I grew up in, you know, um, was already kind of spiritual and same goes for my cousin. My cousin is a bit of a shaman too So I think it's um, it's kind of a family line here, but Yeah jumps from one career to the other, you know a lot of people um, Email me saying I'm not I'm not sure if I should go for this. I'm not sure if this is my path um, You question yourself already what you need to do is to ask yourself today. What do I want to do today? What do I like doing today? What makes my, what brings me joy? And you don't have to know the whole outcome because if you will be looking for in the future so far away, you're going to get yourself confused and you won't enjoy the journey, but you'll also find it very difficult finding what it is that you like. It's not about asking questions. It's about doing everything from here. Okay. So that's ha what happened to me. I remember when I was a teenager, a lot of friends would call me uh, asking for advice. And when I was a bit older, I remember saying, gosh, I love helping people. I love advising people. But I had so much to do. I had at one point two jobs, full-time uni, you know, it was quite overwhelming. And I said to my friend laughing, only if I could get paid that I would love this job, you know, because I don't have enough time for myself and everyone else at this moment. And here you go, that's what happened. So for most of my life, I was already mm, kind of advising people intuitively, but I didn't know that that's something that I was doing. I just knew that I could feel what I need to say and I could feel um, other people even without knowing them when people would start talking about certain person but that was already an intuitive way of um, advising people. How did you start your spiritual business? Um, I don't know you know one day I came across um, tarot readings on YouTube because I was browsing a lot of spiritual stuff and I was like, this is pretty cool, you know, let me see, uh, let me see if I can help some people. And here we go, I have a channel now. And um, if you need advice on collective tarot readings, there is a video on my channel. I think it's just the first one. If you click on my channel, the first one that I highlighted. 
Um, and I found it really uh, insightful, but also very beautiful in many ways because um, it only shows how energy works. A person comes across a certain video, they click a certain pile, they choose a certain card or a certain stone where a message lays in it already. So there's so much more to what's happening, you know, doing this job than what our eyes can see, how energies work, how I have to put in 50, you know, 50% um, into a tarot reading, meaning to explain the message clearly, clearly to you and then you put the other 50 by choosing the right pile for yourself. And, uh, you know, I didn't expect it to be as healing as it became for a lot of people. And thank you very much for sending me emails and letting me know. Mm, I try my tarot readings to be not only about, you know, kind of superficial stuff and telling you only about the future. You probably notice sometimes that even the reading is about the future. I tend to give you advice and I tend to explain you things that maybe other people don't like very much. But I think part of um, this work is to explain people how energies work or what is the reason behind a certain scenario. And um, that kind of makes them see a situation from a bit of a different perspective but a lot of you guys already are very in tune and you are very spiritual and very insightful and i think a lot of times what you find is that the message that you choose comes through more so a confirmation rather than something new that you've heard of okay let's see let's see what else you said you are so calm, balanced, and you know what you are doing in your tarot reading videos. Well, you know, peacefulness and groundingness isn't um, always present. I have to work and uh, and earn it in a way. So we said, how do you communicate with um, with angels, spirit guides, ancestors, etc.? I'm that person who likes to only communicate with uh, my ancestors, apart from any other spirits. And I didn't start until recently. Mm, which was again, you know, I kind of took time to be led by my higher self and I know some people like to connect straight away when they start their spiritual practice to talk to their guides, you know, or angels, whatever you, spirits closest to your heart. But I was like, I want to get to know myself first and see why I stand and what kind of abilities I have and come from heart and then I can use communication uh, from my ancestors as a bonus but it's not I wouldn't call upon my ancestor and say hey you know uh, help me um, guide this client um, I I would sit with spirit sometimes before going to bed coming from gratitude and thanking for the guidance that I have been receiving until now so I am um, I'm not that person who does it very often. I do it when I feel there is a need for it. You said any spiritual or inspirational leaders you have in your mind that you would like to share with us? I love Sadhguru stuff. I mean, I love how he approaches um, the most complex uh, questions that people may have, how he simplifies it. And um, who else? Osho. Osho, Sadhguru. Um, there are people that I look up to, you know, doing similar things like I do in my field. From mediums, I'd say Alison Dubois. I know some people like to dig into her past because she was on some TV show and stuff, you know. But I'm not judging her based on her past events. I'm judging her work. And I love how professional she is. And I also love her mm, life path story. So I think there is a video somewhere on her channel uh, that where she talks about her wanting to catch the bad guys since she was a kid, right? And um, wanting justice and then how her path took her to the spiritual path and she became medium. That was quite interesting too. But there are a lot of people that are not as known or as and not as visible that I look up to in my everyday life too so you know um, I think you can have certain gurus walking around you me and Joseph Moon um, we started this journey kind of together you know we practice quite a lot together 
we would oh my god we would challenge each other when it comes to this path when it comes to intuition when it comes to remote viewing and um, stuff like that you probably have seen me and joseph moon do remote viewing and i'd say guys if you want to develop your intuitive abilities you know it's practice practice you ha you have friends you can practice with you have people you know we have community here too we have 20 23k people if you want to comment down below and say hey listen i want to practice with someone let's let's exchange um i think we should use this community a little bit more um and uh, i know sometimes guys say in the comment section down below i'm so lonely but then there are so many people commenting below saying hey you know you're not alone so that's what i would like this community to be a bit more of if you feel like you want to practice certain ability comment down below right before below this video what is it that you're looking for and maybe someone who lives across the world will be looking for the same type of partner you know in crime and you'll be able to learn and grow together mm. Sil Yoga said, how did you start with mediumship and how do you control this? For example, I have it too, but I cannot control it. And how you deal with fear of the unknown. Um, when it comes to fear, I'd say what I believe is happening here with you, it comes from lack of either education on the topic or practice. How do you control it? I don't, you know, I don't know, the more I practiced uh, the... In general, the more I develop my intuition and, and senses, the less I lacked control, if that makes sense. I'd say you shouldn't be uh, afraid of, of you know, um, anything when it comes to spirituality because uh, they feel a fear, you know, especially entities. And you're talking about mediumship. When it comes to mediumship, it's a very different thing. You communicate with a past deceased person. Entities, tricksters. I like to call them tricksters. Your past loved one is someone who um, is not going to play. This is someone who's here to pass a message, comes from love. Now, a lot of times they give a really good advice because their ego is dead, right? They've lost the ego, they lost certain perceptions that were not good for them, for their soul, right? Because soul is very free and our ego can um, kind of put, put our um, light in prison sometimes. That's how I like to see it. And a lot of times when I, when I connect to people <laughs> who say, and listen, Brigitte, I want to hear, let's say, from my grandma, but she was so against tarot. When I connect to the grandma, grandma is like, she's laughing, sarcastically laughing, but she's there and she's saying, now I get it. Now I get how energies work. Now I get what this is about and I get what that's about, right? So what matters is the intention behind the process. Um, how did you start with mediumship? It was very unexpected. I, I'd say, guys, one more thing. If you feel like you want to go and visit a certain place, certain location, go ahead and do so because there's always some um, something there for you. If you're being pulled towards certain place, location, even if you haven't been there, even if you don't know why, if you, even if you don't know people over there, energetically you need to get get charged up by that place location building even mediumship started after my trip to portugal the second one actually because throughout my path uh, when i just started doing tarot professionally i just before that i believe i went to portugal to uh, to face my fears because i was really afraid of big waves and i was like you know what i don't know why i don't know what hit me i want to go surfing solo like i want to go alone and i want to go surfing and uh, i remember when i was booking a hotel i was like nah you know what i know if i'm gonna book a room for myself only i'm not gonna socialize as much i want to go there and be free and explore and face my fears so i booked a dorm which was very beautiful was um it was a on top floor and there was a window that opened straight to the to the ocean so that was wonderful and uh yeah the moment i went surfing and again that's where the aqua arcana aqua you know uh, channel name comes from afterwards 
I had I had intense experiences there. I mean, the energy, I don't know how about you guys, but my friends, whoever visits Portugal, they say that the energy there is super intense. Look at the history, it's quite intense. And I always wanted to visit, so I went surfing to Lisbon. I came back and I started uh, doing tarot professionally there. And I think after some time, I was like, I gotta do this, I want to do this. And there's some time has passed and I wanted to go to Nazare. Um, it, was, um, it was fascinating me for a long time and those massive giant waves, biggest in the world, right? I think Jaws also have uh, really big waves, but Nazare, oh my God. So I went there with my friends. We, um, we had an amazing time. We uh, booked a penthouse right on top of the hill and the price was so ridiculous too. I mean, everything just went so smoothly there. And um, we just sat there with Joey, you know, on, on a cliff watching the waves while our other friends were just walking around. And I was like, can you feel the energy? He's like, yeah, damn it. So we sat there for a while and I came back from Portugal. And um, I think a couple of weeks passed, maybe a bit more. But Joey was talking to me outside and he was like, he was telling me a story about his colleague someone I haven't met and he was talking about his colleague and next to his colleague I could see a um, it's it's difficult to describe because it doesn't come you know through as in movies but um, I could sense the uh, male energy around this um, girl and I was like Joey I see I see a male next to her, but I knew that this male was past because I could almost like see him a, a, li a little bit above and only part of his face. And um, he's like, he didn't tell me anything. He went, go on, tell me more. And I just said everything that um, came through to me, you know, the, the, uh, this man gave me uh, certain sensations, you know, there was a feeling like um, he showed me a clock, you know, the glimpses are very quick. Um, it's like two you know millisecond he showed me a clock and then he made me feel afterwards um i'm sorry i didn't have enough time and then he showed me a roller coaster fun fair and i was like oof this is exciting um and it felt like remember the times you know and um, i just gave him all the information that i felt was coming through and the next day he came after work was it the same or next day i'm not sure I'm lost because it feels like it happened ages ago. And he said, you were actually communicating with her father who has, who has um, passed away from suicide. And that was quite a, an intense, you know, start to mediumship, you know, especially such, such case. And then this, um, this gal came to our house after a couple of weeks and I did it live and she was kind of blown away by this whole um, experience and I was more blown away because I didn't know that I could do that and I started practicing it a bit more but I was kind of crazy the way that I did it I was like I kind of always needed to see the to see some kind of a result to make sure that that's actually what's happening so what I did <laughs> I reached out to you guys on YouTube when I had maybe around 3,000 subscribers and I said, listen, um, I think I do have this ability that I just discovered. If anyone would like to be read, would like to come, not read, but would like me to connect to their past loved one, just comment down below a name of a person you want to connect to. So what i saw i basically just saw your guys nicknames and the person that you want to connect to. and i that's only information i had and i said i'm gonna post these readings um so please be okay with sharing the and you know giving me feedback what certain messages meant what i said you know and you were um, guys really um, amazing with that I've posted a couple of videos on my channel not knowing what to expect, you know. Imagine John wants to connect to, I don't know, Tim. And I recorded myself and I recorded the messages and uh, the feedback started flowing in the comment section down below. 
and I was like, this is insane. So I had made a video that explained the sensations that I was getting and also right after the message that I've passed, what kind of feedback I had from you guys. And uh, that video, it's called uh, Mediumship Meanings Behind the Sensations. I can link it down below, guys. If I'll forget, let me know. But yeah, that was that was a very intense, 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 uh, tra not, not transition, but an upgrade, you know, understanding what can be done, you know, what I, what I have, what I hold. And there is a saying, you know, there is a saying every... Uh, Every medium is a psychic, but not every psychic is a medium. I do still believe that it could be worked on, but um, sometimes I think people might be a bit afraid and block it off themselves. That's what I think so far, because we're all growing in this journey, aren't we? I also kind of recently talked to one of the one of the people who've been doing that for a long time i booked an assessment i didn't go for a for a class it was more like you know half an hour to book with this medium from arthur finley college which that college is the oldest uh, spiritual college which i'm still aiming to go to but due to you know covid it's quite, quite impossible right now mm, they mainly focus on mediumship um they bring in uh, shamans too you have different classes over there you can book six days and uh, it's quite an intense you know course what i like over there is that they touch a lot on ethics in mediumship because that is really really important and uh, mediumship i think it's uh, it's one of those things that is closest to my heart and because i can see the impact that it has on a person. I can see how someone is like, how, how is that possible? You know, how is that possible? How do you know that this is the picture that I have? You know, how do you know this? I don't know, they tell me. They tell me it's just a communication. You see, you will see on my website, sometimes I take mediumship off. Because sometimes I feel like I want to focus on, on other work. I, I respect this work and I cherish it dearly. So if you feel like you want a mediumship reading and it's out of stock on my website, um, just email me, okay? Just email me. I don't have it open all the time, but if, you, if, if that's something that you need, just email me. Personally, would love to hear how you knew this was your path. I know it is an internal calling from the soul and what, what your heart leads you to. You've answered your question pretty much I just did what felt good to me and uh, I just continued doing it until one day it turned out to be my job never imagined it in a million years and then you said I comprehend all that but how did you begin to implement that knowing and move forward despite fear and as long as you as you trust your path I think that has to be a, you need to take a bit more interest in how the energy works how intuition works because if you come from heart and that's something that you dearly love doing um, and you feel like you you have complete fulfillment in it I don't think you can fail and I think that's where the, the fear comes from right fear of failure you said I'm asking because I started my business and my channel here on YouTube because I was led to do so. I have had various forms of confirmation and communication contact with my star family, but I am still scared shitless and it seems like I cannot move forward. I respect and adore you, so any info with them you can spit my way would be amazing. Thank you, Temperance. Mm -hmm. I'd say recognize where is that fear coming from. Take your notepad out right now and write down what is it that you're afraid of. And then on the other side of paper, write down what is it that you uh, believe is going to happen, but feel it with your heart and don't try to come up with scenarios that are not necessarily true. Kind of a, a very simple thing to do, but it can be an eye-opening experience where you look at it and you're like, really? Am I afraid of this? Come on now. So that's how I'd like you to look at this, okay? Recognize where your fears are coming from. Um, because a lot of times your mind will think of the worst case scenario, which never happens. And it, a lot of times, it's actually the opposite. So 
there was a saying, you know, the brave ones drink some champagne, so uh, go ahead, you know, do your work. There's nothing to be afraid of as long as you do what you love and you are authentic in what you do and you have knowledge in it, right? I mean, we, we learn until we die, so don't pre push push yourself too much and don't put pressure on yourself. But as long as you are authentic, because a lot of times people do something, start something and be like, oh, but I'm, you know, a lot of people do it this way, but I don't want to do it that way. Sorry, throat chakra, guys. Um, I don't want to do it that way. It doesn't feel right to me. Don't do it that way. I mean, sometimes people ask me, is that is that a way, you know, what's the best way to shuffle the tarot cards? I mean, what is the best way for you? Do you want to throw it on the floor and pick a couple of cards up? Do it. Do you want to flip the table? Do it. I mean, this is completely, this is your craft. This is your craft. As long as you in tune here, you will be able to read from anything. It's, it's like, um, I like to call it, a secret weapon, right? For example, I think of you right now and I want to choose a certain um, shell. I don't overthink it. I feel which shell. Which shell do I feel like I want to grab? Sometimes it's the first instance. You don't, don't even have time to think. Oh, that's the one. So what I do before my readings is, well, um, I play meditation music in the background when I read for a client and I, uh, I don't look at the name of a meditation. I just kind of scan the imagery of every thumbnail and feel which one is right for the client and just click on it and in the midst of the reading or sometimes it comes through in the beginning too um, I would start giving person advice and then I look at the name of meditation um, say if I would be dealing with someone who is very um, tense or very stressed you know um, even the reading would be like at first throwing me off a bit like oh this is this is much but um, remember how to differentiate what's yours and what's not uh, so this is already a message for you that that's probably what kind of energy this person is in and i would look at the uh, name of the meditation music i decided to play and it's usually something to do with the anxiety stress and you know burdens so just kind of go with it allow yourself to uh, to flow with it um, because pressure is not gonna help in, in especially in this job you know the more pressure you put on yourself you can put pressure on yourself that you want to practice more that's great but um, if you're gonna pull a couple of cards and you sit there and you're like oh my god don't get anything i don't know what to do you're ready in here but you're not here and that's when it, that this is blocking you here that's why you can't clearly sense how long did it take you to learn a tarot deck i don't even know See, I'm a, I have an issue with being a perfectionist. So what I wanted to do, I didn't only want to know about the tarot card, you know. I pulled out the... I, I found a website where there is the whole long-ass paragraph and history on one card. And I would read it and, and soak it in again and again. And I was like, the more I, the more I learned and the more information I put in my brain, the more I understood that when I pull cards, I get lost in the knowledge and I block off my intuition, the intuitive part in the reading, because I try to apply everything that I learned to the T in a reading. And I took some time off to think about this, what feels right to me. And that's when I switched to intuitive reading and intuitive reading is the most powerful reading right you have the knowledge of a tarot and you also have um, your intuitive ability sometimes you might notice that you need maybe one card only um, and you can talk about that card for ages right so we all different some people need more some people need less but sometimes people find it difficult where they like oh my god I don't even know why this five of Pentacles for example is here it feels like I finished uh, the message. I completed the story. And, you know, if you only went by the books, um, it would seem like you have to implement every single card in the reading and go like full in depth to it. But then how do you know how to connect one card laying next to the other? 
right? Where do you start? From which side do you start reading the cards? What does this, is that the person that you're talking about or this is someone else in their life? And that's where intuition kicks in and answers all those questions. So yeah, that's, that's uh, what I started doing. That's when I created the intuitive deck. Where is it? I have created an abstract tarot deck. And the, the meaning behind it was, it looks like that, um, to get lost in the imagery of it, um, which isn't something that you would recognize if you took a tarot card, right? That's something that you can already talk about. You get it. You don't even need to know the meaning of this card. You probably are going to be really good at explaining how this person feels like or what's happening in the background. But this deck has nothing to recognize in a way and what it does what it did to me through vision imagination and creative aspects of this deck um i connected to the in intuitive uh, part of me much much deeper and um, sometimes people would say oh my god what is this like what what like how do i read and uh, because the logical mind is looking for an answer, right? I don't even know what it says. But get lost in this card. How does it make you feel like? Do you like the way that it looks? Do you pay attention to the colors? More blue, to teal, turquoise, less gold. Right? So come from feeling. And then it's going to take you places. You will start seeing in that abstract art uh, certain images that you probably would never notice if you looked for a certain maybe object that you understand symbol that you understand so yeah that's why that's how the intuitive deck was born and i tr tested it out on people who don't even uh, read tarot and they were pretty good at this i must tell you right i gave it to my mom well she's quite spiritual but she's not as uh, she doesn't have that close relationship with, um, you know, with tarot or reading, reading from anything. And uh, I gave this deck to her and I said, I'm thinking of someone. Tell me, um, tell me uh, something about them. And she pulled those cards and she's looking at them. Like, she was like, where do I start? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, okay, take, chill. What do you feel? Take yourself places, you know? And then she... I remember she said I see a plane and I'm like okay how do you see it she went it looks like I'm I'm, fl I'm flying and I'm so high up and I see an island you know and I'm in the plane and the person that she was talking about was a pilot so <laughs> she didn't even know the name of the person that I was thinking of so yeah it's um it's quite it can be quite intimidating at first but um the more you practice the more you'll see how you can read from anything so say if you give me a name right now you give me a name and i'd pay attention to where i want to look or what do i want where do you look there are so many objects to take information from behind any object that could be a story too you know where did you get this um, candle what is the the meaning behind that blue color and stuff like that so we have information everywhere. Access it through your intuitive abilities. I do hope that this ramble uh, wasn't boring and I'm sorry that I'm not gonna cut this video because I just don't feel like cutting it um, and making it super perfect. I just wanna chat with you guys. And I wanna do more videos like that where I just chat to you guys and answer your questions. And sometimes I feel a bit meh about doing those because I know how much editing it, it's gonna take me so I'd rather do a bit messier videos but get them out to you in time okay tribe I hope that this was helpful and any other questions that I haven't answered um, I'm gonna keep those for the future it's not to say that I forgot about any other question because there were like 78 or maybe 80 questions um, throughout time i'm gonna keep checking what it is that you want to know about and i will be answering those questions in the future for now bye love you as always and i'll see you soon